Something's cooking in Kelsey's kitchen. Come on in, come on in. And if your belly's got that itching, come on in, come on in. The main ingredient is a pinch of love. And only the best comes out of Kelsey's oven. Come on in, come on in. Kelsey's Kitchen. I'm Kelsey Nixon and this is where we make fast, fun, and affordable meals. Today I am joined by an amazing guest, HUD himself, one of the greatest guys I know, and he is here to help me with this date plate show. HUD, what holiday is coming up? Well, one of my favorite holidays, uh, Valentine's Day. The day of love, right? Holds a close place in my heart. That's right. Um, well, I was thinking that I could maybe give you some tips on how to make dinner for your date. Okay, yeah. I think it sounds like a pretty good idea. <laughs> We've got an excellent menu. It's not going to cost you that much. You're going to be able to throw it together in no time. I could always use the help. Okay. In fact, I've already gotten started. That's how excited I am. <laughs> so, what we're first making is chicken pesto roll-ups. And the thing that's good about this is it looks like this great gourmet dish that's really simple to make. So, okay. I've got some chicken going in here, and what I did to this chicken first was I pounded it thin to about one-eighth of an inch. You can see here that I put some plastic wrap over a regular chicken breast, took my pound meat pound tenderizer, excuse me, and just pounded it super thin. You can also buy chicken breast cutlets that are pretty thin, but we're rolling it up so you can't have it too thick. <laughs> got it? Got it. Okay, while I'm doing this, how about you cut some of this asparagus for me? Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. You're going to um, snap off the very bottom, just because that's kind of a woody part that you're really not going to eat. It doesn't taste very good. Should we take off this top, too? Yeah. You're natural. Okay. I knew you would be. And uh, then why don't you cut it into fourths? Okay. So we're getting them pretty thin. Asparagus is a great vegetable to use. Um, it's time for being in season is actually February to April so we're just we just barely entered into asparagus season and the good thing about that is that asparagus isn't going to cost you that much money to buy it can be up to like four five dollars sometimes but I got it for a dollar ninety nine the other day so not much to complain about how many of these are we going to be using um, why don't you cut up three of them does that sound good yeah. I'm going to reach across to you and just grab this dish now on my chicken you want to make sure that you don't cook it too long, so it's still somewhat flimsy, I guess that's the proper term. Um, because like I said, we need to roll it up, and if we cook it too much, then it's going to be really tough and that's not going to work. Okay, I'm going to get this other one going. How's the asparagus coming? Coming along all right. Good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Trying to get this chicken out without having to touch it, so I don't need to wash my hands. Okay, there we go. Okay, Hud, so the question is, do you have a special someone you're going to be cooking for? Um, I may. You may. Well, keep, this, them, keep my fingers crossed. Good, this will be a good menu. I have a <laughs> feeling. I have a feeling. Okay, so... I think so I got these done here. The asparagus looks good. We're going to do a couple of layers. We're first going to do a layer of pesto a layer of cheese, and I like to use Asiago cheese because it melts better than Parmesan cheese, okay. and then some tomatoes. And we have two options with the sun-dried tomatoes or the Roma tomatoes. So depending on the flavor that you like, um, sun-dried tomatoes are a little bit more expensive, but also a little bit more fancy, I guess you can say. Okay. So um, why don't you take this one and start throwing that together. Your pesto is going to go first, followed by some cheese and the tomato and asparagus. How thick should I, should I lay it on here? You know what? Personal preference. I happen to really like pesto, okay. so I get it on there pretty good. But um, like I said, you know, that's, that's one thing about cooking that I don't think people understand, HUD, is that you don't always have to have a specific measurement, especially when you're cooking things like this. In baking and things like that, you need to make sure that you're pretty accurate. But as far as this goes, you know, it's all up to your own flavor. Most important thing is you always got to put a pinch of lemon in it. Oh, pinch of lemon. <laughs> HUD, you know, we need to mention something. HUD was 
the writer of the Kelsey's Kitchen theme song. So he holds a very dear place in my heart, that's for sure. <laughs> that song, so good, gets stuck in my head every now and then. Can't get enough of it. The cheese goes on after the pesto, right? Yeah, the cheese goes on after the pesto. Okay. And then you can throw some of those. Which tomatoes are you going to use? Sun-dried tomato? I think I'm going to go with sun-dried, yeah. Good. Good choice. And then this one's just about done. One thing I didn't mention is you'll want to make sure that you season your chicken with salt and pepper. And I've done that beforehand. But if you, if you forget to do that, it really does make a difference. So a little salt and pepper, big difference, especially when you're using kosher salt. Okay. Okay, now stick a few of those asparagus sprigs in the very oh. top. Okay. Actually, more to one side because we're going to roll it up. Okay. Just kind of like that. Actually, other way around. This way? Yeah, because we want to stick it out a little bit. Kind of that oh, okay. gourmet look. All right. Perfect. Now go ahead and roll that sucker up. Let's see. Here. Yeah. Just roll it nice and tight. Uh-huh. Okay. And then you're going to secure it with some toothpicks here. Oh, the garlic and the oil. I forgot to mention that. I just started with about a tablespoon of oil in here with one clove of garlic minced and it smells wonderful. Adds that extra uh, bit of flavor to your chicken. Oh, this oh, is good. Oh, has taste. Yeah, I like this. Just throw a few toothpicks in there. A few huh? toothpicks in there and when it bakes in the oven, okay. um, we're going to, it's going to kind of seal itself up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to throw this other one. Oh, Actually, in, yeah, but not bad, huh? <laughs> I'm going to do it in the same dish. Okay. Don't really want to do it on that plate because we had some raw chicken. And same thing. Think you okay. can handle that? Yeah. Okay. Now, this meat tenderizer that I was talking about, if you don't have one, you're probably like a lot of other college students that don't have one. This is not a normal utensil in the kitchen, but I would recommend getting one. I got it for a couple of bucks, and what it does is it makes the meat more tender, it makes it thinner, flatter, so you can experiment with, with meat and different things like that. So, okay. meat tenderizer. If you don't have one, sometimes I'll use like a measuring cup, um, <laughs> a heavy measuring cup, and just pound the heck out of that thing. Today I was uh, preparing these, and my neighbors thought that I was hanging pictures on the wall as I was banging on the cutting board, so. <laughs> yeah, I think whenever we've had to tenderize things, we just always get, go out in the garden and get a rock, use a hammer or something. Good. It's just wrap it up in some saran wrap and That's use it. right. That's right. <laughs> See, inventive. I like that. That's the college boy <laughs> way of, of tenderizing meat. Just get a rock in the backyard. <laughs> All right. Hug, you're natural at this. That's looking great. Now, the asparagus. The asparagus and those asparagus uh, sprigs look really nice. Um, another thing about asparagus is you can buy white asparagus also, and in Europe, that's actually the preferred vegetable um, over the green asparagus. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult to get in the United States and qu quite a bit more expensive, so I'm usually a fan of the green. And looks good. And sometimes the chicken will fall apart, I, you know, just by the nature of, of the cut. And you just take those toothpicks and you kind of patch it up and when it cooks, like I said, it kind of molds together and you've got this great presentation um, of this wonderful chicken dish. So, I am really impressed, man. <laughs> now, if a college guy can do this, anybody can do this, right? <laughs> and if I could do it, anybody can do it. I'm That's not right. A cook, <laughs> okay, so we have our two uh, chicken pesto roll-ups. We're going to stick it in the oven, 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Want to toss go. that on over. And uh, by that time, we'll have an entire meal ready. So, stick this baby in. We'll put it on the lower shelf. And how, how does it strawberry shortcake on a stick sound? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. I well, love strawberries. You know, that's what we're making next. So, you don't want to go anywhere. Hello! The job market is a competitive place. In today's economy, extra skills mean a better job for you. Speaking English is the skill you need for greater opportunity, more money, and a brighter future. Introducing Hello Channel, an exciting new television channel that teaches English as you watch TV. There's something for everyone, and the more you watch, the faster you'll learn. All you have to do is say hello.
Welcome back to Kelsey's Kitchen. We've already started on our dessert that we're so excited about, right? Right. We're making these strawberry shortcake um, on a stick. That's what our dessert's called. So it's a little twist on, you know, a great dessert. So I've started melting this chocolate in here. Um, it's a double boiler, so I've got boiling water underneath, just a glass bowl on top. That'll prevent it from burning. I'm going to add a little bit of sh vegetable shortening, um, and that'll kind of give it that creamy texture that we need. Um, for dipping our strawberries and pound cake, of course. Okay. So, while I'm doing this, would you mind whipping some cream? Yeah, no problem. There's nothing like fresh whipped cream, right? That's right. Makes yeah. every occasion more fun. It's kind of like the cherry on top to a great dessert. <laughs> That's the way I think of it. Um, yeah, better than that ready whip stuff, better than cool whip. And um, how if you'll notice, the bowl's kind of cold and the beaters. And that's one tip um, that you can do when making whipped cream is if you put those in the fridge beforehand, you'll get a better texture out of it. So I'm going to turn this off. It's just about right. Now chocolate's very temperamental and it'll burn real easily. That's one reason we added the shortening. And um, that's another reason that I'm not just melting my chocolate in this uh, saucepan. Um, this is a much better way to do things so and as you'll see this chocolate will get a nice glossy look to it and yeah who doesn't love chocolate covered strawberries on valentine's day i do <laughs> it's like the trademark dessert don't you think yeah <laughs> yeah good how's that so i just gradually so i just put the powdered sugar in yeah right? why don't you up that speed okay right Good. You could probably even take it a little bit higher. And the reason that we added the, the powdered sugar is because it'll give it a nice sweetness. And we're also going to add the vanilla, which he just did. Um, kind of doing the same thing, just more intense flavor. Really good. And as you can see, my chocolate is all melted now. It looks wonderful and smells wonderful, might I add. You can use any type of chocolate, milk chocolate, semi-sweet, dark chocolate. They'll all work. Um, the nice thing about dark chocolate is you get a really rich color. Same thing with semi-sweet. Your milk chocolate's going to be slightly lighter. So I've got these nice strawberries over here. Now strawberries aren't in season quite yet, but on Valentine's Day, why not splurge? <laughs> Spend the extra money, get some strawberries. So I'm going to start dipping these. Now you'll, uh, when using strawberries, you don't want to wash them until right before you're going to use them. It'll kind of dry them out. So that's what I've done. Um, and you'll want to make sure that they're dry before dipping them um, because the water will ruin your chocolate. So how's that coming, Hud? Is Seems it thickening like, it up at all? Yeah, it's getting a little bit thicker. I'm Good. always scared to whip cream because I always whip it too much. So it turns it out much? being hard as butter. Yeah. My mom never let me do it when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. Now, in addition to these strawberries, we're also going to take some pound cake um, and dip that in this chocolate, um, hence the strawberry shortcake on the stick. And um, I just bought the frozen pound cake you can buy in the grocery store um, for a couple dollars. And the nice thing about that is um, I've already cut it up, but it's very easy to cut up when it's a little bit frozen. Um, and nice, you can make nice cubes with it. Looks pretty nice, so. There we go. Oh man, these look so good. Oh, those do look good. Who doesn't? Honestly, who doesn't love uh, chocolate-covered <laughs> strawberries? You know it's a special occasion when someone's getting chocolate-covered strawberries, right? <laughs> Hud, what, to, what to, uh, made you decide to make uh, dinner for your date this year on Valentine's Day? Um, well, just in the past, I think I always like to, I think cooking is a lot more personal. I think restaurants are always crowded, especially on Valentine's Day, right? That's right. And uh, I think it's just a lot more personal. Um, a lot more thought and care is put into it, I think, so. That's right. I think it's a good way to show your significant other that you care about them. Well put, Hud. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Let's see. I think this is starting okay, to thicken yeah. up. Starting to good? thicken up a good, yeah, looks okay. great. It should still go longer though, right? Yeah, it's, I'd go a little bit longer. Okay. Don't let me do it too much. I won't. I won't. Okie doke. So, Hud, are you asking for, are you hoping for anything this Valentine's Day? <sighs> no. <laughs> I'm just hoping, I'm just hoping for a good time. Good. That's all. 
That's a good answer. <laughs> um, with my pound cake, I just stuck a toothpick in these, and I'm just going to do them about half way, maybe even just a quarter. Just dipping it in there. And I did turn my heat off um, as soon as my chocolate was melted. You can just stand them straight up like this, and it'll actually help them get a nice flat bottom. Um, we're going to skewer these on kebab sticks like this, and so that when you layer them, um, it'll be layered pretty easily. And when that amazing whipped cream that you're doing is done, um, it's going to serve as like a dip or more of a garnish for the kebabs. And I'm telling you, if you bring these out to your sweetheart, she's going to... She's going to think that you hired a caterer. <laughs> <laughs> but little does she know, you've been in the kitchen, right? That's right. Okay. I've done a few extra strawberries here for myself. <laughs> but um, uh, you'll only want to stick probably three strawberries and three uh, pieces of pound cake per skewer. Oh. There we go. It's getting close. Yeah. I'm watching you, hide. Just a little bit longer. No overmixing here. Okay. Our chicken's baking up in the oven. Just finishing off. And we're gonna, we've got our dessert going. And what's going to happen after this is we're going to stick these in the fridge or freezer. Kind of let that chocolate harden up. Um, and then we're going to make garlic bread. Because what is chicken with pesto and tomatoes without garlic bread, right? It's a great thing to have as kind of an appetizer for your meal. That's maybe something we should talk about, Hud. Okay. Setting the mood when <laughs> cooking for your significant other. It's a very important aspect. Right. And uh, some, some good ideas would maybe include taking a card table and setting up somewhere special or getting one of your friends to be the waiter as he <laughs> brings your sweetheart their plate of food. <laughs> so keep those in mind this Valentine's Day as uh, you're cooking for that special one. I'm going to run put these in the refrigerator. We're going to finish whipping up this cream. When we come back, we're going to make that garlic bread and some pasta to go with our uh, chicken pesto roll-ups. And we're going to serve this there. How do you feel about that? Sounds good. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. We learned English. Your kids can too. Just watch Hello Channel. Welcome back to Kelsey's Kitchen. Over the break, we've been busy. Right, Hud? Right. Uh, boiled some water. We threw some angel hair pasta in there. And it's going to match real nicely with our chicken pesto roll-ups. Um, oh. So that's got just a few more minutes. And while that's cooking, you keep an eye on that. And I'm going to make us some garlic bread. Okay. Easiest recipe in the world, and it tastes like a million bucks. I'm telling you, this is a good one. So, what I have here is a half cup of softened butter. And this is just butter that I let sit out for about an hour or so. And um, it's real, you know, easy to work with. And I've actually already mixed my herbs um, up. Now, what you've got here is you've got a little bit of dried basil, a little bit of dried rosemary. Um, I think there's a little dried, pa or dried parsley in here, some garlic salt, some garlic powder. Usually an eighth of a teaspoon for most, but you can go to the website for the specific recipe. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this to my butter. So um, it's kind of like a garlic butter. Um, and, you know, garlic bread, I did a little bit of research, Hud. Okay. <laughs> Started in 1940 is when the first garlic bread was found. And um, it's when there was this upsurge of the Italian-American restaurants starting. And it's um, kind of a trademark dish they had. So... This is uh, one version of a garlic bread. So we would always have garlic bread at home growing up because my father we're we're actually Italian, so oh, we'd always have good Italian stuff. Of course, you're <laughs> Italian. Oh, that's great. So I bet your dad's got some good garlic He's bread. He's got recipes. a few, mostly his mom, but yeah, yeah. Well, good. So it's as easy as this. Now, um, we're just going to spread this right onto some French bread here. But another thing you can do with butter like this is you can get some saran wrap or some, some clear plastic wrap 